Hello, and welcome to the dungeon. I'm your host, Rob. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the UA Barbarian for our, you know, formerly known as 1 D&D. Um, last video, we took a look at some of the new weapon properties that they've uh, added, which I quite liked. I liked the idea of making the weapons themselves better but then restricting who gets these extra bonuses from the weapons. So someone like a cleric wouldn't get those extra abilities, but, you know, who knows, maybe a war cleric would, for example, right? But, you know, the warrior classes, like barbarian and fighter or whatnot, will get weapon masteries, allowing them to do cool things with weapons and making, you know, before, really, you had great weapons and then you had, like, bow weapons and both of those were exceptionally great because they could benefit from feats like great weapon mastery and sharpshooter and that's where a lot of the damage came from it wasn't from the weapon itself it was from the feats that could be taken with those weapons and i really like this move to just make the weapons themselves better and to give you reasons to use other weapons i mean like sword and shield is one of the most iconic looks in a fantasy game and the truth is, it just wasn't very good in 5th edition, you know? It was still good if you were playing certain classes, right? Look at Hexblade, you might not have wanted to take enough levels to get to level 3 to be able to take a great weapon. If you wanted to just take a 1 level Warlock dip and use Charisma, then sure, you know, Sword and Shield was a good way to go, right? There were other classes too. P classes like Paladins that were often making up their damage through Smites and not actually from the weapon feats themselves. You know, that worked fine, but like, you know, if you were just playing a fighter or a barbarian, especially a barbarian with reckless attack, uh, you know, you might as well just take great mastery. But anyways, we're going to be looking at the new uh, revisions here, and we'll just make it bigger so my garbage eyes can deal with it. Anyways, so we've got our class group warrior, primary ability, strength. Um, you know, we get all of this stuff explaining the basics of the class. We get some design notes. And some of these are pretty interesting. So it says, Rage can now be extended with a bonus action each round. Taking damage doesn't extend it. That part sounds pretty bad. It says, but, forcing someone to make a saving throw does. The focus is now on what you do, not on what's done to you. Also, the playtest Rage can last for 10 minutes rather than 1 minute. Finally, Rage is now stopped by the incapacitated condition. So this, in my opinion, is a huge, huge boost for the Barbarian. You don't have to worry about, you know, somebody missed you and you didn't take damage, so now your Rage ended. I mean, you can extend it with the bonus action, and it's lasting 10 minutes, which should last you for the entire combat very easily. So, this is nice. Uh... Also, we're getting Weapon Mastery at level 1, of course. Primal Knowledge is a new second level feature which unlocks non-combat functionality for Rage. Uh, I'm all for adding non-combat abilities to the Barbarian. That is one thing they've been sorely lacking overall. Danger Sense has been merged with Feral Instinct and the limitations on its use have been removed. Indomitable Might has been moved from 18th level to 9th level. That's a huge move. Brutal Critical has moved from 9th to 11th level, and its extra damage has been increased and now scales with your level, which is nice. Resistant Rage has moved from 15th level to 13th level. Uh, Relentless Rage has moved from 11th level to 15th, and rather than restoring you to one hit point, restores the number of hit points equal to twice your Barbarian level. This change will help prevent the Barbarians from immediately dropping back to zero hit points. True, that's something that happened a lot. Rage Resurgence is a new 17th level feature that restores the use of Rage whenever you roll initiative. Because of this feature, the Barbarian doesn't gain unlimited uses of Rage at 20th level. That makes sense, though. Primal Champion has moved from 20th level to 18th level, and its increase was changed from 4 to 2. Although it does sound a little deceiving, because the Epic Boon also gives you the other plus 2 that you used to get. So anyways... Creating a Barbarian, we see that we're still getting our D12 hit dice, Constitution modifier, of course, and, you know, basically unchanged. We've got uh, our Strength and Constitution saving throws, we've got Skills, we've got Simple Weapons, and Martial Weapons. 
tools none armor training is still the same light armor medium armor shields so we've got some notes on multi-classing uh, obviously you need at least 13 strength in order to take uh, barbarian or to multi-class out and then you know the notes on the martial weapons you get first barbarian level and you get your first barbarian level you get armor training with shields you don't get any other armor types so let's take a quick look at the chart here uh, the rage rages per day remain basically the same except that of course the old chart used to say unlimited here for level 20 we don't have that anymore but you know that's all right Rage damage, uh, as far as I can tell, let's get scale and get exactly the same. We go to three at fourth. No, we used to go to plus three at ninth. Oh, so the rage damage bonuses are scaling. Oh, no, it's still the same. I, I was looking over here at weapon mastery, sorry. So also those are still scaling the same. And then of course weapon mastery is new, so you know. Um, also they gave us the berserker in this to look at. Which is probably a really good decision. Berserker is, you know, widely regarded as one of the worst, if not the worst, barbarian subclass in the game. And if it wasn't for the original player's handbook version of the uh, Beastmaster Ranger, it would probably be considered the worst subclass. Period. But then the Beastmaster Ranger got a rework and became a lot better. <laughs> so, uh, ooh, bad news if you're a Berserker barbarian. Anyways, so Rage, we already talked about this a little bit. Uh, you can enter this bonus action, provided you aren't wearing heavy armor. You get your damage resistance, that's the same. You get your Rage damage. This is mostly the same, but now it just says when you use a weapon or an unarmed strike, you're using strength and deal damage to the target, you gain a bonus of damage equal to your levels of Barbarian. So this is going to apply to a lot more attacks, basically just any attack that's using strength. Because before it didn't apply to things like, say, throwing weapons, right? So if you're using a javelin or a hand axe or some other throwing weapon that you still use strength to attack with, didn't matter, you didn't get the rage bonuses. Now you do. So really just cleaner and better all around, in my opinion. Took advantage, you have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, and you still can't concentrate or cast spells while raging. Uh, the rage lasts until the end of your next turn and ends early if you don heavy armor or have the incapacitated condition. If your rage is still active on your next turn, you can extend the rage for another round by doing one or more of the following. Make an attack roll against an enemy, force an enemy to make a saving throw, take a bonus action to extend your rage. Each time it's extended, it lasts until the end of your next turn. You can maintain a rage for up to 10 minutes. You can enter your rage a number of times, showing you barbarian level in the rage's column and the barbarian table, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So, like I said, uh, lasting 10 minutes is way better than lasting one, and, you know, being able to use a bonus action to extend the rage is, you know, a nice option, right? At least not having to reuse another use of it, especially at low level when you don't have many uses. On armor defense, uh, this is basically unchanged as far as I can see. 10 plus your dexterity plus your constitution modifiers. You can still use a shield, which is nice. Unlike, say, the monk version. Uh, then we've also got a weapon mastery. So we get two kinds of simple or martial weapon, martial melee weapons. So we have our choice, such as great axes or hand axes. When you finish a long rest, you can practice drills and change the kind of melee weapon you choose. So this still will apply to martial melee weapons that can be thrown because I just mentioned throwing weapons a moment ago so things like a hand axe you could still throw it and apply weapon mastery you couldn't apply it though to say like a bow or a crossbow or other martial ranged weapons just to be clear um, you reach certain levels of this class you gain the ability to use mastery properties of more kinds of weapons as shown in the weapon mastery table so you don't get like all the options the fighter is probably going to get. We haven't looked at the fighter yet, but I'm just going to guess the fighter is probably going to get everything. But still, you know, you're getting you're getting some, and uh, I, I like it. Level two, primal knowledge. 
gain proficiency in another skill of your choice from the list of skills available to barbarians at first level. That's kind of nice. More skills is, you know, always better. In addition, while your rage is active, you can channel primal power when you attempt a certain task. Whenever you make an ability check using one of the following skills, you can make it as a strength check even if it normally uses a different ability. Acrobatics, intimidation, perception, stealth, or survival. When you use the ability, your strength represents primal power coursing through you and around you. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. Right into the mic. Always great. Anyways, um, I do like this quite a bit. I've always thought that barbarians should be able to make things like intimidation checks using strength instead of charisma, you know? That just makes more sense. Um, stealth, like, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense that I'm stealthier because I'm angry. But I've seen people point out the idea that you're actually, you know, now that it's, like, connected to your primal awareness, it just means that you're channeling your inner, uh, you know, hunter-predator type of aspect. And I'm like, okay, I, I can get behind that. Second level, reckless attack still. Uh, suicide all concern for defense, attack first desperation, and basically it's the same. You get advantage on attack rolls using strength during his turn, but attack rolls against you uh, have advantage until the start of your next turn. However, again, this does not specify melee weapons only, so, you know, throwing hand axes or whatever will still give you advantage on those attacks, which is really nice. I like, I like that they've made changes to that across the board and just give you more options, right? That's one thing about Barbarians. If you couldn't get into the combat, you always felt like it kind of wasting your turn and, you know, then if you rage, you're always worried that if somebody doesn't hit you, you just wasted your rage, but then if you do it next round, you have to use your bonus action, maybe something else you want to do with your bonus action, whereas now you're just like, yeah, I just, uh, rage, who cares? I can attack even by throwing my hand axe even if I didn't reach the guy. I can do that recklessly. It's fine. You know. Uh, yeah, you know, it just gives you uh, better options. So at level 3 we get our Barbarian subclass of course. That's going to be Berserker. We'll look at that in a moment. Level 4 we're getting a feat. Level 5 we're getting extra attack. Level, level 5 we're also getting fast movement. So we get an extra 10 feet of movement as long as we're not he wearing heavy armor. They really really penalize heavy armor if you're a barbarian. But, you know, it's still probably better than being a monk in heavy armor. Level 6, we're getting a subclass feature. Oh, the subclass features have all remained the same for barbarian. They used to get them, you know, at these exact same levels, right? 3, 6, 10, and 14. So, no changes there. Level 7, we're getting our feral, our feral instinct. Feral. Feral instinct. Uh, so, home, that we have advantage on initiative rolls and dexterity saving throws. So, nice there. Level 8, we're getting a feat again. Level 9, we're getting a Dominal Might. Uh, if your total for a strength check is less than your strength score, you can use that score in place of the total. So, notice, though, that it says a strength check, which could apply to all the things you got back here under Primal Knowledge. So, this could be a Perception, or a Stealth, or a Survival, Acrobatics, Intimidation, whatever, right? So if you fail, you can use the strength instead, which is pretty nice because you're probably going to have high strength. However, I will point out that you already had advantage on the strength checks, so you probably weren't going to fail it anyways, in which case this feature is nice, but probably not going to be super useful. It will come up every now and then, though, because even with advantage, you can still roll, like, you know, double ones or twos or whatever, right? Level 10 subclass feature, of course. Level 11, we're getting our brutal critical, so this has changed, as we mentioned before. When you score a critical hit with a weapon or an unarmed strike using strength, the target takes extra damage equal to your barbarian level. That damage is the same type dealt by the weapon or unarmed strike. So... Now, instead of just getting the uh, Brutal Critical Dice, which scaled pretty slowly, to be honest, uh, now it's just going to be, you know, flat damage equal to Barbarian level. Which, I don't mind. I, I think that's okay. Level 12, we're getting another feat. Level 13, we're getting Precision Rage. Your rage is so fierce that now it lasts for 10 minutes without you needing to do anything to extend it from round to round. It still ends if you become incapacitated or don heavy armor. 
Uh, I actually think this ability is a little on the weak side because we already have 10 minute rages that we could extend and, uh, you know, or whatever, you know, if you could attack, whatever. Um, now it's just, oh, the last 10 minutes without you need to do anything to extend it from round to round. It's like, okay, I mean, it's there, you know. But I already feel like rage has been improved so much that this really isn't doing a lot to boost it up. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's something I haven't thought of. But it still ends when you're incapacitated. So I feel like it's not really doing a lot. Anyways, at 14th level, we're getting our subclass feature. 15th, we're getting our Relentless Rage. Uh, your Rage can keep you fighting despite group's wounds. If you drop to zero hit points while your Rage is active and don't die outright, you can make a DC 10 Constitution saving throw. If you succeed, your hit points instead change to a number equal to twice your Barbarian level. Each time you use this feature after the first, the DC increases by 5. When you finish a short or long rest, the DC resets to 10. So, I mean, this is obviously a big improvement because you did have the one hit point problem, you know, where you stay at one hit point and then you just get hit again anyways and then you go down. So, I mean, by the time you get this now, you're looking at 30 hit points and you're raging, which means those 30 hit points, you know, unless you're taking spell damage or something else like that, fire damage, whatever, right? Those 30 hit points are really closer to 60, in which case, you know, that's a that's a good chunk of health to be getting back. However, you are 15th level at this point, so it is a pretty high level ability. I've, I've seen some people that are kind of uh, trashing this ability though and saying that it's kind of weak. I actually don't think it's too bad. I don't think it's too bad at all. Like I said, 30 hit points, especially when you're raging, that's a good chunk of hit points on a barbarian, you know? So, I don't mind it. It's clearly better than the one hit point we used to get. Anyway, 16th level, we're getting another feat. 17th level, Rage Resurgence. Whenever you roll initiative, you regain one expended use of your Rage. Um, I don't see this as being a big deal because your Rage lasts a lot longer now. But since you do have out-of-combat uses for Rage, this still could come in fairly handy. You know, there's situations where maybe during the adventuring day you're using you know a couple of rages in combat but then you're also using a couple of rages out of combat so being able to just regain one of those every time you roll initiative does allow you to keep you know fueling those out of combat uses as well you don't get to that situation where you're like oh, i've only got two rages left kind of need them in case we get a big fight you know now it's like yeah whatever i can use them both if we, if we do have a big fight i get one back <laughs> you know uh, anyways, 18th level, Primal Champion. You embody Primal Power. Your Strength and Constitution scores now increased by 2, and their maximum is now 22. So, like most of the other subclasses, your former 20th level Capstone has been moved to 18th level. In the case of the Barbarian, it was technically nerfed because you used to get plus 4 to each, and your maximum became 24. But we'll deal with that in a second. So 19th level, you're getting another feat, somebody else. 20th level, epic boon, you get the following benefit. Choose your strength or constitution score. That score increases by two and its maximum is now 30. So this is basically giving us the other half, but notice you're choosing only one of the two. You used to get like, at level 20, you used to get four strength and four constitution, and the maximums are now 24, you know? Now you're getting two con and two constitution at 18 and then another two to one of those at 20 but your maximum is now 30 so you know that's kind of cleared up at least because i remember um i mean we just assumed that it was still able to go even higher but we did have a case where one of the players played a barbarian in a campaign that went all the way to 20 and he got the like, manual of strength or whatever it is whatever the the magical book that raises your strength by two right and then he had the capstone so we just let him have 26 because we assumed that well yeah why not you know the book raises the score your 20 feet or your 20th uh capstone ability raises the score sure why not so now at least that kind of stuff's clarified where you know your maximum is now 30 so if you did get something like that 
even if you're sitting at a 24, you've got room to go, right? And of course, you gain uh, your epic boon. Um, Barbarian subclass, Path of the Berserker. Now, like I said before, Berserker was kind of considered to be one of the weakest ones. I actually did one of my earliest videos was take a look at the Path of the Berserker and try and decide, it, is it really as bad as people said? And uh, the truth is, probably not quite, but it was pretty bad, and there was a lot of justified criticism. You know, I did see people saying, like, oh, you could frenzy yourself to death, but realistically, nobody ever did that, you know, like, you know, come on, we're not idiots. But it did really cause problems. So let's take a look at the design notes here. First and foremost, frenzy no longer causes you to gain a level of exhaustion. This was the big problem with frenzy. I think removing this was a great plan. In addition, it causes you to deal extra damage each round that you use reckless attack instead of giving you a bonus action attack and conflicts with the rage's use of bonus action. I agree. It also conflicted with things like, let's say you had polar mastery or grit with mastery and then you get a critical hit and you wanted to be able to use that critical hit to get you your bonus action attack from grit with mastery but you're already getting that from Frenzy and, you know, so now you're really not getting anything that, you know, that particular turn. You've only got the one bonus action. It's like, oh, I got this thing that lets me attack with my bonus action. And another thing that lets me do the exact same thing. Okay, great. So, you know, just way better. Especially the lack of exhaustion. That was that was the big killer of Frenzy before. Uh, anyways, Mindless Rage ends the charm and frightened conditions on you rather than really suspending them. Um, I Functionally, this is basically the same thing, I think, but this is technically better, so, you know, whatever. Retaliation is moved from 14th level to 10th level. That's a big boost because, honestly, Retaliation was one of the best abilities that the Berserker got, and getting it at 14th level is pretty late. Uh, Intimidating Presence has moved from 10th to 14th level and has been improved. It can affect a group of monsters rather than only one. Your rage extends its range, and you don't have to spend your action to expend it, extend its duration. Huge buffs all around, it sounds like. So let's get into the actual nitty-gritty here. Level 3, Frenzy. You can go into a fren Frenzy in battle. If you use Reckless Attack while your rage is active, you deal extra damage on the first target you hit on your next turn, or on your turn, sorry, with a strength based attack. To determine the extra damage, roll the number of d6s equal to your rage damage bonus and add them together. The damage has the same type of weapon or unarmed strike used for the attack. So you're looking at an average of uh, 7 damage, even at level 3, right? Because you've got plus 2 rage bonus, which means you're getting 2 die. So average of 7. Um, you know, that's a good chunk of damage at level 3. And of course, you're probably going to hit because you're going to be, you know, using reckless attack, right? So you're going to be consistently doing that extra seven damage. Anyways, level six, mindless rage. You have immunity to the charmed and frightened conditions while your rage is active. If you're charmed or frightened when you enter your, your rage, that condition ends on you, which is also nice because it means you can just, you know, oh, I got frightened. Well, I'm just going to enter rage and just cancel it. Level ten, retaliation. When you take damage from a creature that is within five feet of you, you can use a reaction to make one melee attack against that creature using a weapon or an unarmed strike. So basically the same, uh, you know, earlier. <laughs> and Intimidating Presence, level 14. As an action, you can strike terror into others with your menacing presence as you swell with primal power. When you do so, each creature of your choice within 30 feet of you or 60 feet if your rage is active Make a wisdom saving throw, DC of 8, plus your proficiency bonus, plus your strength modifier, uh, provided the creature isn't behind total cover. On a failed save, the creature is a frightened condition for one minute. At the end of each of the frightened creature's turns, the creature repeats the saving throw. Um, oh, so we've got more here. Once you use the feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. If you've run out of use of this feature, you can spend one of your use of your rage, choosing not to activate the rage in at activating intimidating presence instead. Man, I'm having a hard time reading. Sorry, it's very late at night and I'm tired. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. 
So overall, uh, I do like this quite a bit. The fact that, I mean, 60 feet if you're raging, and it's your choice, there's no friendly fire, right? It's just each creature of your choice. That is a huge, huge radius. So you should be able to affect a lot of creatures. Um, granted, by 14th level, a lot of things are immune to the charm and frightened condition. But, you know, I mean, most humanoids and stuff like that aren't. Um, there's, you know, there's lots of targets still that are not immune to frightened or charmed. Um, you know, like I said, there's lots that are. So it's not like you're going to be using this in every single combat or anything. But, you know, it's a huge AoE. You can affect a lot of things at once. Um, you know, decent saving throw, right? Uh, a lot of creatures tend to not have the best wisdom saving throws. It's not the worst either. But, you know, the constitution and strength are usually one and two, right? And, uh, you know, you've got a pretty good chance of at least fearing something, assuming, you know, we're talking about a scenario where they're not immune, right? So overall, I think it's pretty good. I think that um, Barbarian used to be one of these classes where the first five or six levels were pretty good in most cases. But unless you wanted to go all the way to 20 and get the four strength, four con, which was, by the way, one of the best capstones in the game, right? It, it really was. It's just that it was a long stretch between those you know, between like say seven and twenty, where you weren't really getting a lot. Your rate, you know, your rage bonus damage scales pretty slowly. The number of rages you get scales pretty slowly. Your critical, uh, your brutal critical die scaled pretty slowly. And if you, you know, just went into like, oh, I'm just gonna take like a couple of the fighter, grab action surge, and you know, maybe even go like champion, so I crit twice as often, and I'm critting. You know, so I'm critical on 1920, and I'm attacking with advantage. You know, there, there was just so many other options that just ended up usually giving you a lot more in the short term, or even in the long term in a lot of cases. Um, I feel like there's still a little bit of that going on. Like the first, really like the first seven levels, I guess eight if you want to defeat, which you probably do, right, are pretty good. Indomitable Might, like I said, it's it's not bad. Um, you know, you use your strength store instead. But like I said, a lot of those checks you're already going to have advantage on. So you're probably not failing them that much, you know. Brutal Critical is nice, uh, you know. But Persistent Rage, like I said, Relentless Rage, um, you know, they're, they're okay. Well, Relentless Rage is okay. I'm not so sure about Persistent Rage. But it does kind of feel like, again, you get a lot in those early levels, and it, then the later stretch seems to be a little dry. Not as bad as it used to be, but, you know, it would maybe be nice to see some of these other things, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe looked at. As for the Berserker specifically... I mean, honestly, the biggest change they needed to make was just fixing Frenzy. And I feel like this is just so much better. So I would say that that is basically mission accomplished. Uh, giving yourself immunity to charm and frightened conditions was already pretty good. I mean, honestly, that and retaliation were the two best abilities that you got as a Berserker, in my opinion. So, you know, the, the Mindless Rage is still there. Retaliation got moved earlier. So I consider that a win as well. Intimidating presence, big buff, although like I said, it is, you know, fourteenth level. But it's an AoE now, what not one target. You know, I just I just feel like it's so much better than it used to be. So just in general, I feel like the Barbarian is much improved. I don't know that we really got a lot outside of combat still, despite their clear efforts to give Barbarian something else. They still kind of feel like that, like I'm gonna crush everything in combat and every now and then I'll do something outside of combat. <laughs> uh, which they've kind of always been in. But, you know, overall I do think that uh, improvements have been made. So I'm pretty happy by what we saw. Uh, just on a personal note, I did a video a long time ago with a couple of my friends 
that had both played barbarians to high level. One, in fact, one was the barbarian I mentioned earlier that we played. He played a straight barbarian all the way from one to twenty. In fact, the other guy did too. Eventually, that campaign just took a while to get twenty. But in the end, they both played uh, barbarians all the way from one to twenty, and they both thought that barbarians were a lot of fun to role play. They really got into the you know just the kind of ridiculous nature that a lot of barbarian players end up you know going for right. And just being that fun, lovable idiot who just only cares about fighting and killing stuff. And that is a lot of fun. But they also found the class to be like mechanically quite boring because every round was just like, I attack. Oh, uh, next round, uh, I attack. <laughs> you know, oh, I attack. And guess what I'm doing this round? I attack. Um, I don't know that this has really been addressed. <laughs> it just feels like it's just going to be more of the same. But. You know, at least now you've got the potential for maybe like a range strength build that could be at least kind of interesting. Uh, you're not really pigeonholed as badly into like specific types of builds. You know, this is one problem that we used to have before with with the uh, you know group master and sharpshooter kind of dominating the weapon choices. It's like you you know have a great mastery and then you find this awesome long sword and you're like. Ah, that's that's cool. I just wish it was a great sword. Uh, could we make it a great sword? Uh, no, it has to be a long sword. Like, oh, okay, well, I guess the paladin gets his fourth magical weapon. Hopefully, I get one soon. Still waiting for my first, you know. Whereas now you can be like, oh, well, that's okay. I can take you know a weapon mastery that'll apply to both. Doesn't matter anymore, right? So I feel like you're a lot more flexible as far as. You know, being able to adapt more to what you find and what you want to use, or taking weapons for different properties rather than just being like, oh, all I care about is damage. So, you know, in general, I think that that's just a big improvement. And I feel like barbarians overall look to be much improved. Who knows how they're going to stack up at the end of the day against everybody else because it looks like everybody's kind of being improved, right? Except for uh, maybe wild-shaped druids, but, you know, let's not get into that. Oh, and rogues with sneak attack. Okay, okay. so not ev not everybody's being approved. That was that was a blatant lie, actually, now that I start thinking about it. But, you know, barbarians seem to be approved. So anyways, I think that's everything I have to say about the barbarians so far. Our next video, we're going to be taking a look at fighter, and, of course, they gave us the champion, which isn't surprising. Um... Champions always had a special place in my heart. That was the first D&D 5e character I played with a champion fighter. Because I just spent a bunch of years playing a mage in Shadowrun. And I just wanted to kind of do the exact opposite thing. Uh, but champion fighters, although being much better than the Berserker Barbarian were, they did suffer from, you know, some of those same type of issues. Being a very passive class rather than an active class. Like, say, the Battle Master or the Elders Knight were. You know, so we'll see what they have here for fighter and what they have for champions specifically in the next video. But anyways, that's everything. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, and also, of course, leave your comments in the comment section. I can't believe I almost forgot to mention that. Comments, very important. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.